All right, beautiful day out here. I just threw some red on the rear swing arm and I'm gonna see if I can lay some red down on the frame, get a first coat and uh, let it dry in the nice sunny weather. Okay guys, so we got uh, the rim all cleaned up. Use some Pokemon cards to guard the tire from getting paint on it, but you can see inside the original silver is uh, now gonna be white. Oh, let's give it a little ch -ch -ch. Okay. And here's number three. All right, guys, so as what is typical with any of my builds, uh, plans have changed slightly. So uh, previously I had said that we were gonna run the Pantera uh, stock engine on this mini trike build, and there were a few reasons for that, but um, after putting a new head on that motor and you know thinking more and more about it, it still was uh, a kickstart only engine. And on a dirt bike, that's fine, but on uh, trikes or four wheelers, if you were to try to kick them, you'll end up hitting the rear tire on a four wheeler or a trike, which is why a lot of um, three and four wheelers over the years have had pull starts to avoid that problem. Or electric starts, which they came out with later, like you see here. So believe it or not, if you saw uh, previously, these are the engines I had lined up earlier that were covered in dirt and grime and everything else. And they were part of the $100 lot that we bought. So I really didn't know what we had. So uh, Tom and I went outside, we power washed these units, which uh, this one's a 90cc and this one's a 125. Uh, we do have also a 110 that's electric start. But anyway, we were pleasantly surprised to see how well these engines cleaned up. They're really, really in good shape. This one practically looks new with the exception of this side cover, which you can see here is cracked, 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 cracked. Um, anyway, got thinking about it, and I'd really prefer the bigger engine because the trike's going to be a little bit heavier than, uh, than that pit bike was. So going to go with the 125. However, still have the issue. The 90 at least has an electric start, which will get us by. But this kickstart motor does not have electric start, just like the... Uh, Pantera engine. So what I've decided to do is, since I have to get rid of this and replace it anyway, since it's cracked, I'm thinking about trying to adapt an old 70s, 80s Honda ATC 70 uh, pull start cover on this motor, which was very similar in design back in the day. And if I can do that at a pull start, I won't have the problem, uh, you know, kicking the engine over and I don't need electric start. So I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off. I'll probably order up a uh, ATC 70 side cover off eBay and we'll see how well that fits, if it fits, and what kind of adapters I need to make. But in the end, gonna make this a pull start. Next thing is the engine for our color scheme is going to be all satin black with the exception of the hardware. So I've gone ahead and picked up some satin black engine paint and some masking tape to put over the head bolts because I don't want to take the head off of this engine, but I do want to paint pretty much everything else. So I just ordered this side cover off uh, ATC 70, and I'm gonna attempt to mount this to my Chinese uh, Lafon 125 and add a pull start so that I won't have an issue with the Kickstarter running into the rear tires of my trike. Now, I also have this Honda Recon pull starter and at first glance I said, oh, look at that, that's gonna bolt right on. Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, the bolt pattern, if you line one hole up, the other ones don't line up. It's just a hair off. So. I'm gonna make an adapter plate, probably quarter inch thick, that's gonna go between this and the pull starter, and I'll just clock the pull starter a hair so that I can put um, holes for the adapter plate to screw into here, and then for the pull start to screw to the adapter plate, and I should be able to make it all work. All right, guys, so as mentioned, uh, I went ahead and removed this cracked cover off the side of my LeFon engine, and uh, this is the ATC 70 Honda trike side cover that I ordered. I cleaned it up with some Scotch-Brite. And can you believe, <laughs> just as suspected, these Chinese engines were built based on the Honda design. Look at the fit of this side cover. The bolt holes, turns out, are in exactly the same position. Just line it up. All right, check that out. So this cover actually lines right up on the LaFon engine. The bolts bolt in the same position. I didn't put them all in, but that is gonna allow for a pull start to be attached. So having said that, uh, I mentioned earlier too that I've got this Honda Recon pull starter 
And I use these recon pull starters to make uh, pull starters for Honda ATC 185s and 200s. These are aftermarket units I sell on eBay. And since I already have plenty of the recon pull starters, I figured it makes sense to use the same pull starter and the same catch cage that I make uh, to allow these pull starters to work so that when this is attached to the motor and you pull it, that it actually spins. So I need to adapt this to the flywheel. And then I've made this adapter plate, which has three countersunk holes and three threaded holes. And if we put this on here, the idea is that I can thread in these countersunk screws on the adapter plate into the housing of the ATC 70 pull start. And those countersunk screws sit nice and flat. And since the bolt pattern is slightly different for the recon pull starter, now I've got a quarter inch spacer with a nice flat surface that allows me to take the recon pull starter, put that on and mount to the appropriate mounting pattern for the recon pull start. And this is three holes. And the last one on this side. Okay. All right, so there we go. So there's a, <laughs> a pull start for a Lafon 125. I probably don't need this whole section. As you can see, the old one was much shorter. It came to right here. Once I put it on the bike, I'll see where this ends up because I'd like to trim this nicely to match uh, the shape of my frame. But the only thing I le have left to do here is to add the catch cage for this pull start. And basically, uh, I'm going to use the same catch cage as I use on the ATC 200s and 185s. So I've gone ahead and attached a catch cage to another flywheel, which I had, which is uh, from one of our parts engines. It's exactly the same. And I just added a couple screw holes, countersunk them for flat screws, so that sits nice. It's all centered. And now I'll just take this flywheel off, put this one in place of it. The pull start cover will go on, and we'll have a catch cage that will spin the flywheel. So we will be in business. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this back off, take the flywheel off, throw the new one on, and see what we get. Let's do it. All right, so I got the catch cage installed, these uh, two countersunk screws here, and it is ready to go. So uh, with the adapter plate in place, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the pull start on the assembly, and we'll go ahead and give it a pull and make sure everything works well. All right, got it all mounted. It looks great, everything fits nicely. I think everything worked out really well. It looks factory, just like a Honda ATC 70 would, only this is now a Lafon 125 with a pull start. So um, there's no spark plug in it. I've got the plug out so that I uh, don't have to deal with too much compression because this is kind of high. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a pull and make sure everything rotates well and we should be in business. Yeah, grab right there, perfect. Look at that. Wings right over, perfect. Excellent. All right, one more thing. We still have a kickstart available. So if the pull start were to fail for whatever reason, I mean, that pulls nicely, but if it didn't, we have the kick and we can always just kick it from the other side. So there we go. Excellent. Here, the tribute trike is laid out and pretty much ready for assembly. Um, I am gonna begin assembling tonight and we'll uh, see how much we can get done, but the engine is ready. The tank is painted, the seat is reupholstered, the frame is painted, the rear section of the plastics is painted, the lights are repaired, uh, the triple tree is ready to go. We've got the LED headlight over here. We've got the headlight mount, custom mount. We've got grips and controls in the back. We've got the drum brake. We've got the rear shock. And in the bag, we've got collars, we've got the rear axle on the bench, and uh, we've got our rear brake disc. Over here, we have the rear sprocket, which I decided to go with a 50 tooth, so I have to paint this hub and sprocket because I just changed the sprocket that I was going to use. It was only a 37 or 39 tooth, um, but we're going with a 50. So aside from that, everything else is pretty much painted. So I'm gonna get the camera set up and we'll begin, begin the assembly.
This seems to be the wrong uh, Klingon bolt, too. That's great. Was on that four-wheel game chair over there. Oh, the one? That's the one? Yeah, I think All right, so as usual, not everything goes as planned. Working up on the bench over there was getting a bit difficult, uh, crowded and high and difficult to uh, maneuver. So brought the, uh, the frame down onto the floor and we're gonna continue assembly here on the floor. And I think the game plan right now is, uh, we really don't know how wide the rear axle is going to end up. Um, I want to situate the rims and tires on the trike and actually sit the plastic rear fenders on top and see just where we want the rims and tires to sit, how far out, and then I'll measure and uh, decide on how much I need to reduce the width of the axle so I can take it back off, shorten it up, and that'll be that. So I'm gonna throw the rear wheels on and uh, probably throw the front rim and tire on as well so we can see it sitting on its three wheels uh, somewhat level and uh, take it from there. So let's get after it. Okay, so as Glenn was saying, we get the rear tires on here. And uh, we don't know exactly what the track width is going to be, so we left the axle long so we can adjust it. And so to figure out what the track width will be, we have, actually have the rear plastics here that we scavenged from one of the four-wheelers and modified and took all the air box trays out and stuff like that. And that'll sit roughly about here. And then we can hopefully figure out how wide we actually want these sticking out or how far in. And my guess would be just to have these lugs, so just, just the lugs sticking out, so we'll have to go in about an inch this way. And this side looks about the same, it needs to go in another inch. And I think that'll be looking awesome. Yeah, so right now you can see the axle is sticking out quite a bit off of the hub, so we can shorten that up considerably. And we've got the same kind of situation on this side with a lot of the axle showing before the stop. And if we move the tires in just a bit more like Tom was suggesting, then we're going to take quite a bit off the axle. So we're going to measure the track with, well, adjust the wheels to where we want it. We'll measure the track width, and then we can determine how much to take off of the axle. We'll take the axle back out, shorten it up, and we can put it back in and begin uh, final reassembly at that point. All right, so yeah, we figured uh, we got the axle situated pretty much where we want it. Don't mind the fenders being a little out of square. They're not bolted or anything. Actually, they look pretty good right now. Threw the handlebars on just for visuals, and uh, I really like the way that the tires look right there. So we figured that we have to take exactly five inches off the total length of the axle, and then we can center it up and that'll be that. And we can work on the actual final reassembly. We'll put the motor in, we will mount the gas tank, we'll mount the front fender, the headlight, all the hand controls, and then we need to work on the body uh, as well as the front fender, which need to be sanded, painted. And then in the end, we'll be applying some decals as well that are gonna really set it off. So overall, I am very pleased. I think it looks really cool, really stout, uh, very proportional, and overall, just a nice, clean build. Um, we're calling it a mini trike. Uh, Tom seems to think it's more of a, it's a medium trike. <laughs> a medium trike, <laughs> but uh, mini, mini to medium. Yeah, but uh, I think it's just the right size because whether it's me or Tom on it, it seems to feel really good. Um, here, Tom, why don't you take the camera for a second? I'm going to just pull the plastic. And I'll jump on the trike so you can kind of see, get a visual from the front from the side of me, which uh, I'm roughly an even 200 pounds. I've got a shock that 
should accommodate my weight and maybe a bit more, so it might be a little on the stiff side actually, which is what I prefer to keep the trike uh, pretty level. It doesn't sag that much when I get on it, and I think it feels really comfortable. Overall, dimensionally, as you said, it's kind of medium. It's not as big as a 200X. It's probably about the size of a Honda 110 if I had to, or a 125. And this is gonna be a 125, so I think it's, uh, it's very comparable to a Honda 125M. That's about it right there. Let me try this again. Okay. That puts about everything about in line. And then I want the levers to be at about the same position, which is right there. And I got my throttle. Okay, that'll work. All right, guys, the time has finally come. We got this roller all situated and ready for an engine. So. We're gonna go ahead and uh, bring the motor over. Tom's gonna give me a hand. We're gonna try and hang it. It's just two bolts, and uh, it should start to really look like something. So, Tom, let's grab it and do it. You got that, Tom? Yep. I think. Yeah, there's a breather on this side too. That's kind of hanging it up. Perfect. Looks like it belongs there. All right, and then here, this is the pull start cover that I made, uh, an ATC 70 side cover with a Honda Recon pull starter and the adapter plate that I machined to make the two together so I can have a pull start just like all the typical Honda ATCs had because with rear tires on the other side, you really don't have room to kick with a kick start when you've got fenders and everything else in the way. So. Full start it is, right? There's that or electric start, and this motor did not have an electric start, so it only had a kick start, so it should work. All right, now I am gonna trim this, and I knew that, but I didn't wanna do it ahead of time because I didn't really, really know how much interference it would be, and I wanted to machine it nicely to match the frame. So I think it looks like, it's, yep, it's gonna to have to be trimmed out just like the original, right around here, so I'll just take this machine right there and still have I can leave the three uh, bolt holes to attach it. So I will probably take the original damage cover and trace it and just mimic it so that this doesn't interfere with the, uh, the swing arm back here. It's pretty close, pretty close, but that will work. All right guys, so there it is, motor's in the frame and uh, looks like everything's gonna fit nicely. I've got all the clearance I needed on that front wheel, which was some a bit of a concern because when I had it on last time I didn't have the head on the engine but it clears perfectly it looks like it was designed for it and in a way it was right <laughs> so um, yeah so I'll get this trimmed up I'll machine the adapter for the carburetor start putting the headlight assembly on which I planned on doing earlier I didn't get to it yet and uh, then it's just really running the, the chain and starting to work on the plastics and uh, the wiring so battery and what have you but it's getting there cool So I've got the mini trike up on the jack and the rear wheels are suspended. So what my plan is uh, now is uh, I'm going to try to align the sprocket on the axle with the sprocket on the engine and we'll get the chain on. Uh, the axle has already been centered and positioned and locked into place. So it's a matter of aligning the sprocket. And uh, you can probably see really well, if I take these and give them a spin, the axle runs really true. And apparently I've got a really good balance on the tires as well because it just continues to spin and spin and spin. Um, no wobble, no apparent wobble in either of the, of the tires. And uh, yeah, so pretty good. Um, let's get that chain aligned and we'll take it from there. <laughs> 